Ah, hello, Carla. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Great. Well, thank you again for joining all the way from down in South Africa. This is an exciting one for us. It's, uh, it, I don't know, it just seems different. We, we've done plenty with uh, Europe and Spain and California, but speaking with you on the other side of the globe is really cool. So uh, I was thank you again. Glass. It's seven o'clock at night here, so uh, we're, we're getting stuck into our having a sip of wine after a very hard day in the office. Um, and I think you guys, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. So I thought maybe let me not rather do that because you're all still working and I'm about to have my dinner and enjoy my, <laughs> my wine. So we'll do that afterwards. No, that's but fine. You could, you, you, yeah, no, of course, you can have a glass. But uh, so, so you're, in the, you're in the office right now. So uh, the operations are uh, open and everything's everything's back to normal there essentially yeah. everything is um i suppose we can't really refer to normal anymore because what sure. exactly is um but we are we we spend i'm not in the office full time um but i do come in for meetings now and i'm i'm trying to spend more time in the office um as the days go ahead um all the schools have gone back uh, a lot of the businesses are back um and fortunately we are about to hit summer um so we have a lot of uh, a lot of warm warm weather ahead of us and that's obviously good for for uh, preventing covid so our cases at the moment are re relatively low um, so I think a lot of the South African people at the moment are feeling a bit more optimistic than they were a couple of months ago. Uh, that's great. And that's just such good news to hear because I know it's been a rough road for everyone, but especially with South Africa. We'll speak a bit more about that here shortly once, uh, once we get rolling. So, uh, so what's, what's happening right now in the vineyards? Have you had bud break yet? Yes, we have. Um, so the, the shoots are slightly small, about 20 centimeters at the moment. Um, not too much that we can really say on, on what the vintage is going to look like, apart from we know that it's going to be very big. Um, so that's exciting, um, but not, not really too sure yet on what the future holds. Um, we have had a lot of rain, which is fantastic because we've come out of a drought a couple of years ago. Um, so it's looking really positive at this stage, but again, we don't want to get too hopeful, too optimistic yet. Um, again, we've had, as I mentioned, a lot of rain in the last couple of months. I see there's rain coming again next week. And so we just don't know what we don't know, but, uh, but we remain hopeful and, and optimistic that we'll have a good one. Yeah, exactly. Well, just to remind everybody tuning in who's all in the Northern Hemisphere, down in South Africa, they're six months apart. So right now, just, just in the springtime and, and about to head into summer. So... Uh, it's always so cool and you know you always hear about flying winemakers who go you know northern hemisphere and then they'll they'll fly down south to help uh to help down there so let's uh let's get rolling here so uh again thank you everyone for joining us uh i know more people will tune as, in as we go but we're going to get started here so uh thank you all for joining this is uh two tongue live we started doing this at the beginning of march as a way to really connect with our customers and some of the great wineries that we represent. So it's, it's really been extremely successful and we do this every Thursday at this time. So tune back in every Thursday uh, to have a new unique conversation with, uh, with a great property that we uh, represent in Teuton. So uh, today we're with uh, Carla Malurb of Rupert and Rothschild in South Africa. So Carla, thank you again for joining us. And um, before I hand it over to you, I wanna just show everybody on the map. I always like my maps. So we are in Africa and we're down at the southern tip there, down in the Cape. So if we zoom in here, we can look at the wine regions within South Africa. So probably a bit small for some of you, but you'll see in the, in the southern uh, edge there, there's a, there's a little yellow portion, uh, Stellenbosch. And then we're just north of that into Fontrook. So uh, kind of right between Parle and Stellenbosch in the southern edge there. So Carla, again, thank you so much for joining us. And why don't you just give us a bit of background on the estate, a bit of the history. Um, sure. I'll leave it to you with, with that. So uh, Rupert and Rothschild was formed in 1997. Um, it started as an amazing partnership with two incredible friends. And I think from, from that moment, this brand has been built on relationships. So um, it was Baron Edmund de Rothschild and Dr. Anton Rupert. Um, they decided that this venture should be uh, born out of passion. They loved wine and they wanted to create something with a unique site in South Africa. So Rupert and Rothschild was formed. They then relinquished their reigns to their respective sons, uh, Antony Rupert and Baron Benjamin de Rothschild. 
Um, unfortunately, in 2001, um, Anthony Rupert passed away, um, and his share of the business was then left to his brother and sister, and that is Mr. Johan Rupert and Hanalee Rupert. And they both own 50% of the business today, 25% um, of the business today, making up their 50%. And the other 50 is is owned by Edmund de Rothschild Heritage, which is Baron Benjamin and Ariane de Rothschild's business in France. So we've got two two amazing families that uh, that we represent. Um, incredibly privileged to be able to work with these two two incredible families, and it's really a a, a wonderful uh, success story in South Africa and the rest of the world. Um, since 1997, we've only ever produced three wines, um, and I think that is a completely unique point in the industry, in the global wine industry. You know, I, I come from a previous company where we used to produce a lot of wines for a lot of different markets, and you start off at the beginning of the year with, you know, three SKUs, and at the end of the year, you've got 13. And for us, is it's really, it's a unique story. And, you know, we've stayed true to our brand. We've stayed too, true to ourselves. We, we call ourselves Bordeaux specialists. Uh, we make two red wines, two Bordeaux blends, and one Chardonnay. Um, and if we like to sort of categorize them as, as a little family. So um, the lady of the family, the lady of the household, Baroness Nadine Chardonnay, and she's named after um, Baron uh, Edmund's uh, wife. And then we have the Baron Edmund, which is obviously the flagship mm -hmm. Bordeaux blend. And then we have the classique, Rupert and Rothschild classique, which is sort of the, the workhorse, uh, the sort of younger brother trying to be the big brother, Baron Edmund, but uh, still got a long way to go. Um, and he is, he's the, he's the workhorse. So, um, so three really great wines. Um, and yeah, we've just got a unique story to tell. I think it's a, it's a brand that um, has not necessarily been around for the longest time, you know, in South Africa, in terms of wine history, we are not the, the longest standing brand, but we are most certainly an icon in the South African uh, wine business. On the farm itself, the pictures that Dave is, is showing at the moment, um, our beautiful gardens and the amazing mountains, that is our visitor from the office. I'm very fortunate when I drive into that estate, that's what I see. So beautiful, so, yeah. Really, really beautiful. And that is not edited in any way. That is, in fact, in th that's ex actually what the estate looks like today. The flowers are just in full bloom. It's really, really spectacular. We have a restaurant on the property. We are open for lunches only. Um, an amazing little hospitality team that serves, uh, serves beautiful meals and tastings. And then we've also got some international wines, which we represent from our partners from Edmund de Rothschild's side. So we've got wines from, uh, from Spain, from uh, New Zealand, from, uh, from France, obviously, um, from Argentina. And we, we, we sell the Champagne, uh, Champagne Barons de Rothschild as well from the tasting room. So it's wow. a really, it's a wonderful, wonderful property. Um, I think a lot of South African wine brands, you know, they focus on the South African brands. And for us in our tasting room, we've obviously got this plethora of beautiful international wines as well, which makes us unique. But obviously the focus for us is Rupert and Rothschild today. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a really, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to work. And I'm very privileged to be able to say I, I work there. No, oh, it's, it's unbelievable. And I've, I, I was lucky enough about four or five years ago to visit South Africa and, and, and Funchuk, that region. And it was, it was really eye-opening. I mean, just the sheer beauty of it. But then uh, also really in Franschhoek, that, that, that region is, it's Dutch for um, French, uh, French Corner, right? That's right. Right. So yeah. It's, it's, it, yeah it's, it's, t talk a bit about that and that history. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, so the French Huguenots, they, uh, they found their way in, into, into the valley and basically claimed the valley. And uh, there's still many, many wine farms that pay homage to, to them uh, back in the day that sort of came into the valley and literally set up their camp. Um, so if you drive into, Fr oh, to, I said French Corner, if you drive into French Hook, uh, a lot of the restaurants are French inspired. They are, there's bistros, there's uh, French accommodation. Um, it's very, very uh, geared towards the, the, the heritage and the history. Um, and I mean, Franschuk is referred to as the food and wine capital of South Africa. Yeah. So just down our road, we have 15, a 15 minute drive and we enter the center of the valley. And it really is a spectacular, spectacular place. The f and I, I was looking uh, in, in preparation for this talk, I was looking at your restaurant and it just looks unbelievable. The menu and, and the preparations and it's just, you guys are doing uh, amazing stuff there. You I know, there's, yeah. there's 
There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of a lot of restaurants in and around Franchuk. Um, in on every wine farm, that's what we do. You know, we we have our wines, but it's not just enough to sell a wine. We want to sell an experience. And a lot of the farms and the estates next to us do you know do similar. So for us to try and stand out and be unique, you know, you've got to work really hard. And and we have a team that is dedicated. We have a team that is passionate. Um, we have a chef that's very young that just is just wants to give his heart and soul into everything. So he comes comes out into the restaurant and talks to the guests a lot and explains recipes with them and shares recipes with them and so it's a very very personalized experience the restaurant is not big at all it's only about 30 seats mm -hmm. and now with covid and we have some uh, some legalities that we have to follow and we can't put too many people in a confined space so that also causes a bit of a it's challenge but uh, but we're very grateful for what we have and and like i said the, the south african hospitality is really important to our culture so we really feel like we need to get people people to our estate and get a, get them to experience the brand, experience the wines, you know, experience what we're all about, not just buy the bottle and, you know, think that that's all that they can get. Right. Now the experience is so important. And like you said, just it's like you're in the, in the perfect area there. You're in, you know, or everything is coming together, this, this French culture and then blending with the South African traditions and the culinary scene. And it seems so cool. Um, I'm definitely going to have to come and visit, uh, hopefully sooner than later. Um, With our partners, you know, we, we, we again, 50%, um, you know, owned by our French family. So when you drive into our estate, um, you know, our signage is in English and French and everything is you know so it's it's really catered so it's just it's perfectly suited to Franchuk and to the to the region and to the areas surrounding us. Oh, that's so cool. So tell me just a bit about this building. Um, is, is this original? That is original. That is our manor house. Um, and so inside, we, we offer it to people that come and stay, our VIPs. It's not open to the public. Um, a lot of the interior has been redone, um, obviously, but this is our typical Cape Dutch um, architecture. That's so cool. Um, really? And it, it, it's, it, how, how old is, is that building? I'm not actually 100% sure. I think it must be from the 1600s, 1700s, round about there. So the farm is actually called Fredericksburg, and you'll see on our corks, if you open up our bottle, you'll see that it says Fredericksburg. The name of the farm is actually Fredericksburg. So it has a long history, much, dating much uh, later to, to where we obviously are today. Um, but Fredericksburg was the name of the farm's commissioned that name. Oh, okay, I got it. No, that makes sense. And I, I, I never realized that on the cork, so that, you know, that kind of connects the yeah. dots of people actually asking us it says you know you're buying Rupert and Rothschild and when you open it and you see Fredericksburg it's sort of is this how does this make sense when you drive into our estate um, on our two entrance walls it actually we've got signage above that says Rupert and Rothschild vineyards and on the two white walls that you can see in that picture the name Fredericksburg stays on those on those two two get two walls okay it's a nod to the history okay I've got it so tell now now that we're looking at the vineyards here tell us just a bit about what makes this little corner of South Africa is so special and why they decided to, to establish the estate here specifically instead of Stellenbosch or another corner. So I, I can't give you that exact answer because I'm not sure exactly why they chose this region. Um, we have a very, very small um, vineyard uh, range on our farm and we don't really use those grapes for our, um, for our wines. Um, we chose, as I mentioned, to be Bordeaux specialists. So we buy our grapes from uh, around the Western Cape. Most of it comes from Stellenbosch um, and then Paul, Wel uh, Paul Wellington, uh, Darling and a bit of Elgin. Um, so we, so I, I really, I'm, I'm not 100% sure why they would have chosen this particular site. Um, but I know that, you know, obviously in accordance with the, with the French culture and, and where we are in the valley, I think it made, made sense for them to position it, uh, it there. I know that we haven't ever really used the grapes that are on this farm for, for the brand. Okay, no, that makes that makes that makes sense, and with the French culture and and everything yeah. together, I'm sure that played a huge and, role. You know about sourcing the best quality grapes. So we have growers that have worked for us for many many years, um, and you know it's it's about sourcing the best quality from the best regions in the best areas to make the best wines. So there we are privileged, and we can you know not necessarily pick and choose, but we can definitely uh, definitely find you know areas that we know are are going to produce great fruit and and use that for our wines. Right. And it, again, I think it's worth noting and just mentioning again, if people just tuned in recently, that you only produce three main wine or three wines under the Rupert and Russia label. So 
it's it's focused it's you know it's not diluted with 20 different brands it's it's very focused which which is it's, and it's tough, tough to do I, yeah very tough and it's it's i mean again like i said i came from a previous company where it was literally you know if you if you in a market and the market sees that they would like a sauvignon blanc but they want it with a little Semillon and your Sauvignon Blanc only has 100% Sauvignon Blanc in it, then you would add the 5 or 10% Semillon to make that market happy so that you can get those sales. And I think it's incredible. I've been with the brand for two, almost two years, but you know, it's, it's 10 out of 10, a hundred points to the, the people that, that started this brand and that have, have grown it up to this point because they've always said no. Um, you know, people have said, let's create this, let's do this. And they've stuck to their guns, which is really, really hard to do, as you say, but has paid off. And the focus that goes into um, making those, crafting those three wines is, you know, it's not without, without fault. It's, it's how can we step up and raise the bar year after year after year. And I think the wine team and the winemakers have successfully done that. Yeah, exactly. Perfecting what, you know, what, what you've already mastered, but there's always room for perfection and going to the next level. So Sitting at perfection, you, you've got to remain there and you've got to challenge yourself. Yet. So that, that's always the difficult part. But um, yeah, like I said, as a brand, this brand is iconic. Um, and I think it's also because it has been consistent, you know, vintage after vintage, vintage after vintage, the customer knows what they're going to get and they, and they feel uh, it's a reliable, trusted, secure brand in that regard. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and speaking of winemakers, it's tough to get winemakers to uh, not want to go off on their own and, push for something else too. But I want to speak about your, your phenomenal winemaker here for a moment. Yes. Yeah. Yvonne, yeah. S tell us a bit about her. And uh, um, we in initially we were hoping to speak with her today, but uh, we're sorry we were missing her today. But give us just a, a bit about her and, uh, and kind of her philosophy and style. So she, unfortunately, as you know, as I said to you on Tuesday, just unforeseen circumstances, and I'm sure she wished that she could be here. Um, but we, she's a very unique uh, character and you know really she's been with the brand for 19 nearly 20 years I think uh, and she was actually the last person that Antony Rupert um, appointed before he passed away um, she's got a team of two people that work with her um, in the wine team so three winemakers three wines which is also amazing incredible um, and she's just a really passionate person she you know she she believes in her team she uh, make sure that the team do, you know gets the, gets the 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 detail and the quality and i think for her it's her passion is all about blending you know um so she she makes sure that that uh, for instance on the classique wine it's our it's we produce about a million bottles of that wine and to blend that wine you know there's an art to it um and i think just to make sure that you get the right grapes at the right times and you and you can make this masterpiece year after year after year it takes time and takes dedication takes effort takes energy and you know it's a, it's not, a, not an easy task at all um i think she's a she's a real she's you know <laughs> we often refer to her as a sort of a jack russell she just goes go goes 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 and when you say when the first time when I, I met her um i had to go and walk around the cellar with her um, about two years ago and she doesn't walk she runs so <laughs> trying to keep up with her is really it's it's uh, it's no mean feat but she's yeah she's respected in the industry and and she's she's earned her stripes uh, throughout the years and she's done a fantastic job now that's impressive and that's that's the type of person you need running that that sort of operation, somebody who's go, go, go and nonstop because that's really what it requires. So um, people don't realize how difficult it is to make wine. <laughs> No, oh, I mean, this is the truth. I don't think I would ever swap my sales and marketing job for, for making wine. I, I, I can't see that because again, you, you almost, you know, you, when is good, great. And, and how do you challenge yourself and how do you keep challenging yourself and how do you know when it's right? And does it, is it a feeling? Is it a, you know, are you, are you working on mechanics? Are you working on uh, instrument? It's, it's a really, yeah, it's not a, it's not an exact science. You have to go with your gut. And, and, and I think, you know, going with your gut takes years of experience. And I think we, we've done that really well. Yeah, no, for sure. She's doing a phenomenal job. Tell me a bit about the winery. This is, this is newer, right? So that's a new winery. Yeah, that's actually an awesome little story. Um, as I mentioned, Classique is a really big volume for us. 
Um, and um, we actually produced this, we, we, we made this new wine cellar. So um, this is the classique cellar. Um, and we, we literally, so we only produce the classique wine um, in the cellar. The other two wines are made in, in the other cellar on the other side of our property. Um, this is Yvonne's baby. And the first, uh, the first vintage to come out of uh, this winery was the 2017 vintage so that's the inaugural vintage and literally it's uh you know i think it shows that it proves the point of how important this sku is to us um that we could create and build our own winery specifically for this brand for this wine and again i think it's unique across the world one wine in one wine cellar i mean i think many winemakers would absolutely kill to have that opportunity just to make one wine in one wine cellar as opposed to juggling you know many different tanks of this and that and this goes and so it's a it, it deserves its own place um and yeah i think it's got a it's it's i think the 2017 vintage of the classique is really a spectacular wine um and it's it pays pays homage to to how, how great the cellar is and how and the impact that it has had Oh, that's amazing. I never even knew that. So one wine, you build one winery for to produce one wine. It's, it seems yeah. crazy, but it's, but that's like commitment to quality and excellence. Uh, here, you know. Yeah. And it's, you know, it is a big blend and it's a very big wine and it's very, very important to us. Um, so I think it's exactly what you say, you know, it's showing, it's showing the people out there, though we don't talk about it that much. We don't like to really, you know, promote that we have two wine, two, uh, two wineries, but it's important that people can see that there is this real attention to detail and quality and focus. So it's not a big blend, you know, wood staves and put it into, into a stainless steel tank and wait for it in 12 months time. This is a, this is a proper, proper wine, but, blend at that point yeah for sure so what's what is this cellar is this the is this the other cellar or this is the um edmund cellar so this is where the nadine sits this is where the the baby sits and, and baron edmund sits in here as well so um this is underneath our marketing offices we have a sales and marketing office and the cellar sits directly underneath it um the classique cellar is on the other side of the property oh, okay yeah it's beautiful so I want to speak, uh, and before we run out of time, uh, we, we definitely have to speak about uh, the sustainability and just the movement of South Africa in general. Yeah. Uh, tell me just a bit about this label and, and what that means. So it's basically just to certify that the wines are, um, we were one of the first in the, in the world to, to create this. It's basically just to say that um, the wines have been uh, produced with, um, with sustainability in mind. So everything da down the food chain um, that has gone into creating this wine is done with ethical best practices. Um, and it's just, it's basically to safeguard the producer and to make sure that, you know, we can show the world that we are proud of what we do and that we do it authentically and we do it with care and, and and, um, you know, care for the people, care for the environment, care for the, the produce, care for everything. It's, it's, a, it's a really great uh, sort of stamp of approval from the industry to say that, that we look after everything that we do with care, precision. And it's, it's really impressive, again, that the majority of the country, well, the Southern Cape, at least, has, has adopted this. I think it's like 95% of yeah. the wines coming out of South Africa earn this label, which is really impressive. It was yeah, when, when they first, uh, Wines of South Africa, when they first released it, it was kind of, everyone said, well, this is fantastic. And obviously the bigger players went on to it first and cottoned on to it first. And now it's become almost, uh, you know, if it's, if it's not there, there's a reason behind it. And you don't want people to ask why. So it's kind of, it's forced the industry, which is great, to, to adhere to it and to make sure that what they do is best practice. And I think, like I said before, it's shown the world that, you know, we, we want to, forced to be reckoned with. Um, you know, we, we see it in, in markets where South Africa is not such a big market. This is really a unique tool for them because it shows that we care and it shows that, you know, we care about the rest of our, our food chain as well. Exactly. No, it's an accomplishment and it shows that it can be done even in a large region. Yeah. It's no, I think it's a good calling card, like you said. And for, you know, at least in the United States, there's a big push for and everybody wants natural and they want you know, they, they want wines that haven't been manipulated. So this is, you know, for everybody looking for that and, and at all price points, you can, you, can, you can get that. Yeah, and it uplifts the industry, you know. Um, so it shows that we're not just working for ourselves and that we, you know, we want to get our wine out and, and, and make a profit. It's not about that. It's about the industry and it's about supporting the industry and making sure that we pull everyone with us in the same direction. Exactly. So while we're on that topic, before we uh, will have to head out, 
let's let's speak about that specifically because I know that South Africa has really been um, affected, you know, really horribly by um, you know the COVID situation, but also the government's response to it and the lockdowns. So a lot of people I don't even think are aware of this. So so tell everybody what happened and and what the current situation is. So I'm going to start off by saying South Africans are eternal optimists. <laughs> Great. That's good. That's important. So, so we, we can have everything thrown at us because we're used to that. Right. But we can also stand up on our two feet straight afterwards and say, you know what? Nothing's going to get us down and let's all high five each other and let's go and sell some wine. And that is the situation that we're sitting in at the moment. You are quite right. We've had a horrendous time um, and we can't sugarcoat that to anybody. We've had two liquor bans um, where we were not allowed to sell any wine. Uh, we were not allowed to to drink wine on consumption. We were not allowed to to sell anything. And that has taken the industry back by about three months. So it was a really, really tough call by the government. And, and there was a lot of hate speech and anger and frustration. And um, the, the alcohol side of the, of the business in South Africa was linked to gender-based violence. And it was really not the right thing for the wine industry specifically. So um, there was a lot of bodies that partic petitioned and made sure that they could get their voices heard. Um, and eventually now they have opened it up, but it's not seven days a week and it's under very strict con uh, conditions now. So we are only allowed to sell wine off consumption, off premise from Monday to Thursday. And from Friday to Sunday, we're not allowed to sell any wine unless you go to a restaurant and you consume it on the premises. Oh, wow. So what happens in South Africa as well is we have, you know, a lot of our sales are done on the weekend. Um, you know, a lot of the people get paid their weekly wages and on the Friday they want to go and, you know, buy their wines or buy their beverages and they can't do that now. So for us, we, yes, we have been badly hurt, um, but also we, it's forced a lot of the people to think a lot differently about how they sell wine and how they show up in people's lives. And I think, as I said before, we are eternal optimists. We will always make light of a bad situation. And what has happened um, now since the, the second uh, liquor ban is that the industry has really clubbed together and just said, you know what, South Africa or bust. Um, and we've really, we've made it, made it our mission um, because we don't have international travelers coming into the country. The South African public is traveling locally and obviously sharing a lot more with each other which they would normally be going overseas or going to different countries now they're staying local and so we have this really awesome support local campaign that's happening at the moment and we see it with a lot of our you know a lot a lot of people in general that never would have been coming to our restaurant or coming to our venue or supporting our wines are now supporting us and they're telling their friends drink south africa drink south africa so there's a massive beautiful amazing story that's come out of this negativity and yes we have a lot of a lot a lot to go and we have a lo long road to to walk ahead of us um but we are optimistic that we will claw most of it back now it's uh, i mean just the optimism and, and the ability to to innovate and to and get creative and, and to work with what you have it's uh it's really great and we've been trying to get the word out there but from our reps and our social media but it's for everybody listening it's, it's so important promote south african wines because uh it's now more than ever. It's it's just a great story and, and 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 just reason to get out there and experience something new and experience South African wine and support them. So, yeah, South Africa is an amazing story to tell. You know, we like I said, we're passionate people. We are, and, and you can feel that passion in every single wine, not Rupert and Rothschild alone. Every single South African wine. I always say the people that you meet in South African wine industry are their friends for life and they've all got amazing wines to share with the world so so we have these beautiful opportunities to get our wines out there and and to have a story behind and everybody loves a story so you know we don't want the industry or the rest of the world to feel pity for us at all um, that's not the case because we are optimists and we are still believing everything's going to come back but the support that we feel from the rest of the world is really grateful and and as i said to you we're grateful for that as i said to you on tuesday you know we've had some phenomenal um amazing support from the rest of the markets that we look after globally and really from markets that we would not ex expect that would be you know purchasing this wine from us at this time and it, it's really just been phenomenal so we are very blessed yeah, that's great and i've just personally i've always been just a huge supporter of south african wine and and before visiting and then after visiting you know it just really cements it and you're you know sort of a fan for life and i was just impressed with every place that we went to and mostly small estates but just the quality is off the charts and, you know, uh, you know, from the entry level all the way up. And it's, um, you know, 
No, we really, we, yeah, as an industry, we sell ourselves short and we need to be more, um, more, what's the word, more proud, more, um, we need to show people more about what we can do. Because as you say, from the lower price points to the very high, there's amazing, amazing wine to be had in South Africa. And I think to all the viewers that are watching and anybody that wants to come and visit, um, I'm, I'm there and the team is there to welcome you. And it's really just a special, special, spectacular place. It really is. And just uh, from myself and, uh, and from everyone at Teuton, it's just really an honor to, to, to represent Rupert and Rothschild. And uh, just thank you again for your time and, you know, for explaining some of that passion. You can, you can feel the passion and uh, the story behind the label, which I knew a little bit about, but after speaking with you, it's, you know, it, you really get that history and that story. So thank you again. No, thank you for inviting me and, and thanks to the viewers and the listeners that have tuned in and uh, I appreciate it and thanks for the support and hopefully we'll be able to have a glass with each other face to face in the near future. Exactly. Well, I'll, I'm going to sign off at this point, but Carla, thank you again and tell everyone there, keep up the phen phenomenal work, uh, especially Yvonne and uh, have a great, uh, great evening. Enjoy, uh, enjoy your glass of wine. Thank you so much. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Bye.